More than 2 million women in the U.S. are alive after having been diagnosed with breast cancer. And those women received some encouraging news recently. A study found that breast cancer survivors who take aspirin regularly may be less likely to have breast cancer recurrences or to die from breast cancer. Joining me now with much more is Dr. Donica Moore, the editor-in-chief of Women's Health for Life. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. So this is some really encouraging news. Tell me about the study. What did they find? Well, what's very interesting is that this is part of the nurses' health study which is not a prospective clinical tri trial, but a questionnaire study of over 4,000 American nurses who had breast cancer. And what they found retrospectively is that the women who took aspirin uh, anywhere from two to five times per week had a significantly reduced risk of breast cancer recurrence, over 60% reduced risk, wow. and a 71% risk uh, reduced um, from death from all causes. Now, interestingly, the women who took aspirin five to seven times a week had still had a risk reduction, but it was a lower reduction. It Were was you about surprised 40. By that? I was because it shows that it daily aspirin doesn't help as much as almost every day. Um, and we're talking about low dose. We're talking about 75 to 81 milligrams per day. Now, these women weren't taking it because they somehow knew that this might reduce mm -hmm. their risk of breast cancer recurrence. In general, they were taking aspirin to reduce their risk of cardiovascular disease mm. or heart attack. So we have many studies that show that daily aspirin therapy can significantly reduce your de uh, risk of death from cardiovascular disease by about 25% and your risk of overall mortality from about f uh, by about 14%. Now in the process, they also found out that there were some other drugs that helped mm -hmm. as well, which are? Uh, those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's ibuprofen or Motrin, Advil, Nuprin, um, and also naproxen or naproxen. Um, of course, Tylenol or acetaminophen does not have the anti-inflammatory properties that aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs do, so they did not see the benefit uh, from acetaminophen. So what is it in aspirin that affects the tumors? And that's the million dollar question right, right there. I wish I knew I'd be getting my <laughs> Nobel Prize right now. Um, but what we believe it is, is that it has anti-inflammatory properties. We do have other studies that have shown a similar benefit of aspirin to reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. Now, of course, we have to do prospective clinical trials before we start recommending this to everyone. But I think it's a good question for women who are breast cancer survivors to now ask mm -hmm. their doctors. Women who are currently on chemotherapy or radiation, however, should not be okay. taking aspirin. So who should take aspirin? Okay. So who should? The easy answer, anyone whose doctor has told them to. Um, anyone who wants this benefit who does not have a contraindication. <clears throat> contraindication means no way, no how over my dead body. And that's if you have bleeding disorders, if you're allergic to aspirin, um, if you have certain liver, uh, kidney, nasal polyps, other problems, um, or if you're a child uh, 14 years or under with a fever and may get RISE syndrome. But the people who should, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force says that men 45 to 79, of course mm -hmm. that's not for breast cancer, that's for cardiovascular benefit, and women 55 to 79 should consider uh, the regular use of a low-dose aspirin daily for cardiovascular risk reduction if their benefits potentially weigh any, outweigh any risks from the aspirin, which is primarily gastrointestinal bleeding. Okay, and so and obviously they should go to their doctor to find Absolutely. out. And just to follow up and make sure. Absolutely. Now let's talk about what makes this study different. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because yeah. they first started this in 1976 mm -hmm. and it just involves nurses, correct? Right, right. and they enrolled over 238,000 nurses in what we call a cohort. So this is a group of women who every two years get a questionnaire, a very extensive questionnaire to, figure, uh, to fill out. And these are on questions that mostly are related to cancer, uh, cancer prevention, cancer recurrence, et cetera, but also focus on every other aspect of women's health. And I don't want people to think this is just one paper or one mm -hmm. study that has come out. This cohort has produced over a thousand publications wow. on all kinds of aspects of women's health. And now they're expanding it because now they're going to start doing this online and they hope to enroll over a million million women. So now why did they choose nurses to begin mm -hmm. with? Well, nurses historically, first of all, it was a great group that was predominantly women in 1976. Um, and they are very educated and they thought they would be very responsible in ca uh, cataloging all of this extensive information. And they've been proven to be correct because they have over a 90% response rate, which is terrific. 
for any medical study. And this is coordinated by a, a whole um, collaboration of hospitals in the Boston area. So Harvard Medical School, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Boston Children's Hospital, uh, Beth Israel Deaconess, and a few others. Now where do you expect or where would you like to see this study go from here to help in terms of cancer research? Uh, great question. Um, certainly we want to know everything about how to reduce the risk of cancer. I actually just wrote them a letter last week asking them to look at some other diseases, uh -huh. including the mystery diseases that affect women, particularly chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, which are diseases we really don't know much about yet, and this would be a great way to right. find out. Now, do you take an aspirin? I do, and do. I'm not yet 55. Um, but that's a great question because the U.S. Preventive Services recommendation is for primary prevention. So that's people who have no risk factors. If you have even one risk factor, your doctor may recommend that you start taking an aspirin younger. So even though I'm not quite 55, I do, and certainly my husband does. And heck, you're probably gonna see benefits <laughs> down the road at this point, correct? Yeah, and, but I wanna also really emphasize one uh -huh. important point about primary prevention. This study did not show primary prevention to prevent breast cancer in the first place. Okay by taking an aspirin. Important. The primary prevention is for cardiovascular disease, not for breast cancer. All it's right. to prevent uh, recurrence in women who already had breast cancer. Dr. Donna Kamor, <laughs> thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Meg.